this is Marga Rose and welcome to the Body Aware Living podcast. We're here to talk to kind and wise people from around the world looking for practical ways to get through difficult times and celebrate our accomplishments. And it's super exciting to talk with uh, Carol. How do I pronounce your last name perfectly? Oh, Marak. Marak. Okay. So yeah. Carol and I, Carol and I zigzagged over 10 years ago. We crossed paths because we're on similar uh, supportive missions on Twitter ages ago. So uh, Carol is an expert in solo aging. What do we do to make sure that we have our practical, emotional, and social needs met as we get older? Whether or not we have children, we expect we're going to be, you know, kind of relying on. So if I could let you tell a little bit more about your project, and then we can have a little back and forth about how we get in touch with what you're doing and how we can help you with what you're doing. Oh, thank you, Margo. Uh, hi, everybody. It's Carol Marock, and my website is Carol Marock, and that's M A R A K dot com. And what I do is I help individuals uh, either through a life plan assessment, through a course, and then also through mentoring, group coaching, or group mentoring uh, sessions that I have. And what we do is we learn to evaluate our top 10 life domains. And what that means is the life plan assessment really allows you to, to thoroughly evaluate where you are right now and which risks are you or will put you uh, in a compromised position as you grow older. Uh, for example, these are the top 10 domains that I helped my parents with. Uh, I was a caregiver for both my parents. And we constantly dealt with either health issues. There were a lot of health issues. So what the life plan assessment does is allows you to evaluate your own health, then your housing and location, social connections, support network, legal matters, uh, financial matters, your life purpose, faith and spirituality, fun and engagement, and also the transportation. For example, if you can't drive to the doctor, do you have a good plan in place or people that you've connected with that can help either take you to the doctor or possibly know where to go to access a, a ride? So these are the top 10 life domains. And so the assessment uh, really walks you through 15 questions per, uh, per domain. And then at the end of it, it really, you have a really clear idea of which, which domain will put you at risk, right? You know, probably is putting you at risk right now or will likely put you at risk down the road. So the earlier you get started and you understand where you fall short and where you excel, then you'll have an opportunity to really rectify and make improvements uh, to those risks. So once you take the life plan assessment, now you have a really good idea of what those risks are. And the course I developed will help you further, you know, uh, dig deeper and give you strategies on how to make improvements. So the two of those together, you really have a, a good way to kind of put your plan into action. I mean, you you're such an inspiration. I mean, just even hearing <laughs> the way you look and your energy and your confidence and the way you're just like, you have this very proactive approach. We're going to age skillfully. And because of that, we're going to be more organized. We're going to be more connected and we're going to have um, just more fun along the way. You just look like you're ready to help people have, <laughs> have, have fun. And because people just have this dread, right? People just have this just dread. And because of this, these fears, we're really not organized in the different categories it would take to be skillful as we get older. And, you know, one of your focuses is on uh, adults who don't have children is one of the first, I mean, it's useful for information for anybody, uh, but how do you have any sense of you talked with like, you know, AARP and research? I mean, how many adults do you think right now are currently in the process of aging without even expecting that they have families or offspring that they're going to 
you know, that are going to do all these things for them in a really kind of passive way on their own behalf, you know, like, what are the numbers like? Do you have any sense of that? Uh, so you're asking how many people have support or have potential don't. support? Like how or many don't. of us like yeah. already know we don't have that, you know, okay. I mean, are you familiar yeah. with what some of the numbers are? There's a lot of us out there. Well, the U.S. Census back in 2020, this last census, the U.S. Census tells us that 31% of the individuals 65 plus live and age alone. And what are there, close to 60 million people who are over 65? Wow. Close to 60 million. So 31% of us are aging alone. And even, I mean, think about it. What about those who are 50, 50 to 50 to 65? Uh, that number is closer to 14 or 15 million people who mm. are aging or living, living, aging alone or growing older alone. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a lot of people, a lot of us. Yeah. It's a very, very big number of people. And uh, so, so this life plan assessment with these useful categories that you've developed, what, what form is that in? How do people how do people make use of this wisdom you put together? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a form that I've developed. Uh, it's online. So uh, you can just go to my website and then uh, at the top menu, you'll see life plan assessment. Click on that. It really walks you through, gives you details about it. And then you're able to purchase it. It's $19.95. That's it. $19.95 to be more prepared. One of my expressions I like to use is, you know, we can't stop big changes and challenges from happening, but we can become more prepared and less scared. Yes, and right. Every, everything you're doing is 100% along that line. And, you know, you've been working on this topic. What made you so passionate to work on this topic? And how long have you been doing it? Because this well, is really I'm so glad you're asking that question because I was going to uh, interject my story. Please, yeah. And um, I was a family caregiver. My sisters, two other sisters or two sisters and myself, we were uh, family caregivers for both our parents. And my mom had several chronic illnesses that she dealt with. And believe me, she required a lot of medical attention. Uh, and my dad lived with Alzheimer's. So you can imagine what that was like. And it required, their care required out of the three daughters, hands-on almost, well, consistently, I'm not going to say constantly because it wasn't constant, but it was consistently and for a period of close to seven years and that they required a lot of attention, a lot of uh, tasks that needed to be done. So moving forward after they both died, it I, quite frankly, I was out on a lovely walk, just like where you are, Margot. <laughs> I was out outside just walking in the trees and oh, I was, I did, cause I love to walk and I love being outside. And on my walk, I was missing my parents because my dad was the last to, uh, to pass away. And I was missing both of them uh, very much. And also reminiscing and thinking back, thinking back of, of the caregiving experience and, and all of the things we had to do for them. And then all of a sudden, it, it, out of nowhere, it, it was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't have, I don't have three loving daughters. I don't even have one loving daughter or one loving son who will look out for me. I'm not even married. I don't have a spouse or a partner to watch out for me. And I swear, <laughs> Margo, I was like walking past that lovely tree that sets behind you. And I, I became dizzy. I really did. I, I, and I held on to the tree because it scared me to death because of my experience in caregiving. I think for some of us who have never helped an elder loved one, don't really know what it's like to age and grow older. And mm -hmm. so the, the experience of that and 
thinking, well, what am I? Actually, I said worse words than that, but <laughs> <laughs> but believe me, it got my attention. And it scared me so much that I turned around from my walk, turned around and headed home. Because I, th and then instant, well, not instantly, but it stayed on my mind, make a plan, make a plan, make a plan. And I just couldn't get away from that haunting thought. So uh, eventually, and th at that time I was 55 uh, and it took several years, but I kept thinking about it and, and doing some, doing research and just thinking about, well, how can I resolve these issues? you know, the top 10 domains that my parents needed the most help with. And, um, and then eventually, uh, seven years later, my plan was complete. And uh, yeah. I'm happy to report. And, I, I, and now I'm over 70, and I'm just feeling uh, so much more confident about living and aging alone. Well, you, I mean, first of all, I wouldn't guess your age by a by a many 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 I mean you just look so gorgeous and educated and 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 inspired and you look calm and relaxed and happy and that's I'm really convinced we really need uh, models of aging that we want to go do um, one of the topics I'm really passionate about is uh, there's geese enjoying this I don't know can you hear the geese yes that's great I love it that's wonderful. I don't know how to improve the audio so we don't have the geese messing up my messing up our little show here. But um, <laughs> no, I think you should keep it. Keep <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Well, just the way you've gotten so organized and I'm wondering, you know, oh, I'll be, it's about depression. I guess one of my topics of interest is uh, how do we reduce depression in people of every age? including teens and younger people. And I think one of the big ways to reduce depression is to create um, get, a, getting, a getting older that looks appealing. I think when people are depressed at 19, they're confused at school, it's college, whatever, all these other eras that people really, you know, get upset by these other transition times, if the future looks even worse than that, I think it's going to really make people, I think it's, it's a really big topic for depression. So I think you know, I think you're really leading the way by having something people want to go towards. And um, that's important yeah. on every level. Oh, absolutely. And, and because some of my clients are depressed and, it, and well, I, I'm not a therapist at all. <laughs> and, and, and many times I'll, I'll give that suggestion for them to, to go to a therapist. However, many times it's just circumstantial uh, that they don't get out of the house. They stay isolated. They watch TV all day. They don't have a life purpose. Um, even in my Facebook group, there are people, for example, uh, complaining about this past weekend being uh, Easter Sunday or Easter weekend, and they're depressed and sad and lonely. And, uh, you know, and so I just posed the question, well, how can you, how can you change that? Is there one thing you can do right now that might get you out of that, uh, a feeling, uh, you know, not just depressed, but feeling like you can't move forward, you're stuck. And, um, and I said, well, you know, how about we volunteer? just to get out of the house. Don't stay in the house, get out and volunteer. Go to a senior center or go to a place where there are peers that you can, and you don't have to become best buddies right away and don't expect to because it takes time to build relationships, but just to be around people rather than being around yourself all the time. <laughs> Right. Well, and the, yeah, abs absolutely. And there are so many fantastic online options now more than ever before. And I love absolutely. Zoom activities and hybrid activities. And, you know, some of my favorite um, friends and clients have been, uh, you know, having movement challenges and things like that. And the expansiveness of all this online connections, connecting 
has actually made it so much better for those of us that have movement or health issues or whatever reason, or we can, we can connect based on interest level wherever anybody is. The geography is so, so much smaller now with the online possibilities as well. And, you know, you've said some really interesting things. I want to get back to it because we, we were just going to call and chat. And then while we were chatting, we said, this is great. Let's start recording. So I know you have a limited time today and you need to get on to your next step. But you said two things. You mentioned coaching and you mentioned something about a Facebook group. Let's let's have it. Let's have it all. How do we get more of you? How do we get more connection and what you're offering? Oh, well, thank you, Margo. I appreciate sure. that. Um, my Facebook group is Elder Orphans. Elder so if you orphans. just Elder Orphans. And I know people some people hate that term. I, I don't particularly care for it. However, it's a it's a it's a medically researched term. And it was coined by a geriatrician back in the 80s in the UK. He worked in nursing homes, and I apologize, I don't know his name. However, he worked in nursing homes and he discovered individuals who have no one to rely on or who have no one visiting uh, them in the nursing home or even as they're aging at home, he found that they are at higher risk for depression, for dementia, or cognitive issues, I should say, a higher risk of uh, early death, um, a uh, exacerbated uh, chronic illnesses or multiple chronic illnesses, and, uh, and a few other issues. But those are the things that he discovered in his own research when he was working as a geriatrician in a nursing home, in several nursing homes. Yeah. So, so, you're, so anyway. you're gonna help us reverse that out. So you're, you're gonna help us reverse that out by connecting with you super early. Like so, yes. so you're I'll I'll make sure that I get all this information. We'll put it in show notes. But you mentioned coaching and I'm curious what coaching yes, services you yes. offer. Well, and for example, once an individual takes a life plan assessment, they may have some confusion on what's the next step to take. Uh, perhaps they even take the course. That's called take charge of your risks is the name of the course. And you'll find all of this at um, on carolmarock.com. And once they walk through those two, or perhaps just the life plan assessment, they may want to hire me for an hour for uh, several sessions to help them really evaluate where they help them evaluate where they are. And then also to take proactive steps and ways, learn ways to really create a plan to set their goals and find account and have someone hold them accountable to make these changes. Because if, if we don't have people or someone to hold us accountable, we're likely to just give up too easily and not and just say, oh, this is too hard. But it's really not hard. It just takes patience and know that it takes time. Uh, it took me seven years. Of course, I did it on my own. I did hire a life plan coach that helped me with a few of my strategies. Um, however, I, I'm available for what I like calling mentoring, mentoring a person. And, um, and then I also have a group mentoring program that uh, 10 to 15 of us will meet once a week or once every two weeks. I'm about to launch that and then, and we'll meet every uh, once or uh, once uh, four times a month or, or twice a month for uh, sessions like six to eight sessions, just to go through the life plan assessment and then tackle the course together. And I guide the group uh, as I, I'm there to guide them. I love all this community, you know, I mean, I just, I love, I, you know, those of us, especially if those of us who don't have children, we can actually choose who we want to spend all our time with. We actually could see it as a form of liberation that we can uh, spend our time with whoever we prefer. <laughs> we can, that's that's you know, right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I guess that last thing, what kinds of things, because you have, you have all these different levels of ways people can connect and come together with community and guidance and what are some of the things available on your Facebook group and what's the name of that? And we'll also link that. Yeah, the Facebook group is Elder Orphans. Okay, and so that's what um, just go to Facebook, uh, search uh, Elder Orphans group. It's a plural, Elder Orphans group. 
and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll come up. There's close to 10,000, a little over 10,000 members now. And that primarily yeah. uh, is more of a support group where people will ask questions when they need uh, help with a specific problem. It could be a medical problem. It could be, hey, I, uh, I need a ride to my doctor's office. Is there, how do you handle that? Who do you call? You know, so a simple uh, questions when people just need, uh, just want uh, support going through, or perhaps they have a, an illness and they just want to, you know, get, find support and get support from people. Just to help them feel better and feel connected. It, it, it is. It just makes it much more fun. Absolutely. So, well, we're going to we're gonna wind up, but I just absolutely love everything you said. And uh, one of the things you mentioned when we were just talking one-on-one -on -one was that you, you could use some help doing outreach. You could use some help doing marketing. And so people could share this podcast. They can send the podcast to ch adult caregivers who are taking care of their parents. They could use it. For themselves, they can use it with their current in-process caregiving journey with their uh, families. Um, I think people that share this podcast, we're also going to pull, I'm going to make a whole media kit out of this interview. So we're going to have um, individual quotes that people could share. We're going to have the video. We're going to have a podcast on the Body Aware Living podcast. People can help support, you know, spread the word. And it's just part of just, it's just paying you back for, for all the good work you've done, making sure people don't have to feel as alone and confused as you were. Like, it's just such kind, it's just such a kind journey you've been on. And I appreciate so much that you've offered this time together, Carol. And, and thank you for everything you've been doing. Oh, well, you're welcome. And thank you so much. I, I wasn't, I didn't know you wanted to do this podcast, but I think it's fabulous. <laughs> everything, we were just going to chat, but everything you said was golden already. I'm glad we have this. So this is Margo Rose of the Body Aware Living podcast. I'm the uh, author of the book, Body Aware Grieving, a fitness trainer's guide to caring for your health during sad times. I also have a Facebook group called Body Aware, Facebook page called Body Aware Living and uh, there's different ways to connect with me on the website, bodywareliving.com. And I'm wishing you all the best. And thank you so much for your time, Carol. I'll uh, be in touch and we'll be following up with each other. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.